Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back for another TOS video. So finally, I have the time to actually sit down, um, have some free time uh, to actually do, the, do up this uh, Norse God discussion. Right? It's been, I've been um, want, wanting to do this for very long and then today, finally, I have the time to do it. Alright, so um, sit down. We're going to talk more about this um, Norse God series. Alright, and then I have a lot to say and then I think I want to hear from you guys as well so do type whatever you want to tell me or to to ask me in the comment section below uh, I'll, I'll try my best to reply to every single one of you guys right so without further ado let's start this discussion okay so some of you guys if you don't already know what is Norse Gods alright <laughs> like if you have been playing from like version 8, 9 and onwards right like you start off from 8 and 9 and you start off, you are, you are happy using like Babylon and stuff like that, right? You guys are so lucky, okay? Alright, so old players like us, we started from version 1, right? Right from the beginning of the game, right? Norse gods are your grandpapa of the game. They are there since the start of the game, okay? So, uh, last time, doing a Diamond Seal draw and getting a Norse god is a big, big deal, alright? And then, you guys are very spoiled, sulking whenever get a Norse god nowadays okay so they're the grandpapa of the of the game and then um, of course being so long uh, being like in the TOS realm for so long there's bound to be a bit of imbalance to the cards right so many feel that Norse has been um, extinct due to many good leaders uh, new and upcoming leaders like Origin of Demons, Babylon and stuff like that right if it feels that um, Norse gods are being pushed aside and then no one actually use them anymore. So uh, we're just here to talk about how we can actually um, what, what we can do to make Norse gods back to their original uh, position. Alright, so uh, note that all this um, discussion that we are doing is basically just suggestions and um, it might or might not happen. Alright, and then with this, let's start. Okay, and one more important thing is that um, during this discussion, uh, we are talking in uh, a a time a timeline whereby virtual rebirth has not happened yet. Right? Please take note of that because uh, I think that is going to change very much uh, a big part of this discussion. Right? So we're going to discuss um, Norse God in a way that there is no virtual rebirth yet. Right, this is including um, Journey to the West cards as well. Okay, so uh, basically I put Norse God in the category of a main God series because of um, their iconic playstyle. I believe every single main main series um, have iconic playstyles. Right? Norse Gods, uh, I will put it as iconic playstyle because um, they actually do have additional damage boost by dissolving enchanted runes. Right? That's their playstyle. Right? By um, extra damage by enchanted runes and then Greek iconic playstyle everybody should know right 5 runes uh, three, sorry 3 runes and 1 enchant that's the iconic playstyle Babylon's 4 columns 1 um, one of their attribute will drop you know that kind and then we have the blood fiends which we will not touch in this series because um, we are just talking about Norse gods here we do not want to talk into talk more about the demon side but you you get what i mean all right uh oh i missed out egyptian gods as well in which um they are very specific um teams whereby they can just uh, wrap um the weakness of their attribute all right so you can see you can definitely own a light stage with like uh pr or series nowadays all right so norse gods iconic playstyle and then but why are they uh, why are they being outclassed so much nowadays right so um many people will say that oh Norse gods look at their active skill it's just basically enchantment all right and then and it's CD 10 everybody will say oh it's, it's such a long CD plus is what what they do is just basically enchant their respective attribute all right in which people think that oh sucks like shit all right in which I think yes I agree it does suck like shit nowadays as compared to other uh, main series out there like um, 
less compared to the recent origin of demons whereby they actually does um, one turn of like light, light and dark they, they do one turn of like Babylon style um, of dissolve alright and then the red green blue whereby uh, more attributes dissolve the higher the attack you know things like that which is actually um, boosting um, the team by a lot right but I know that Norse does extra damage by enchant runes but the damage difference is very very big alright in which uh, I, I believe this is the main reason why um, people kind of dumb Norse gods aside and then now I'll be going through like the other sub reasons whereby why Norse gods are being outclassed in a way alright so firstly I, I believe that in a way is being like dumb aside is because of slot uh, a lot of slot restrictions alright so uh, you can see that by by playing let's let's say playing a uh, pianos alright because we're not talking about virtual rebirth now talk about pianos right pianos actually uh, why are they being so tied down is because they they need Odin right in order to boost up their leader skill by 0 0.5 times you actually need Odin in the team and then another Norse as ally right to kind of boost both leader ally uh, leader multiplier by 0 0.5 right so you need that Odin in the team right there's one team slot down and basically it's a big difference all right one slot is a big difference you can see that PR Greeks right PR Greeks they work fine without Zeus right you can see many uh, leaderboard out there you can see uh, players using Greeks, PR Greeks, and then uh, they, they play fine without Zeus. So why is Norse so tied down by Odin? Right, so other than Odin, um, I'm sure that um, the amelioration of Norse God is a bit of a burden as well. Right, so uh, amelioration for Norse God is like the first few amelioration that has been introduced into the game. Whereby uh, when amelioration first came out, Norse Gods were the first, to, first few series to get it. Right, I was happy at first, but then after that, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh shit. It's gonna be bad afterwards, right? Because of improvements for amelioration, which is true, right? You take a look at um, Norse God's amelioration, right? Stats boost, stat boost, uh, two stat boost, um, I'm not sure. I think it's one and three. And then we have attack boost by column, dissolve, um, amelioration two and four, right? The difference is that uh, you get a one sword boost by dissolving four a column of four below the Norse god and then five two sword boost by dissolving five all right so nowadays like you take a look at paladin queen of uh, i mean all the paladins um and uh Mu Yue, example all right um they do have double sword ameliorations and then they only require three three uh column three runes to be dissolved under that card to get the first sword amelior amelioration boost and then double sword amelioration boost by dissolving four right so it's one rune difference right three and four compared to four and five runes so it, it does restrict your spinning a bit and then uh, i i just feel that um they need to change this <laughs> all right and then next reason is more slot restrictions all right so uh, I believe Madhead have introduced these few cards um, in a way to kind of push Norse God a bit, like boost boost it up a bit. But the problem is um, the cost. I mean the the slot restriction. Right, slot restriction is the problem for Norse team. All right. So uh, what I'm talking about is basically, um, I mean PR Odin is one of them already. As I mentioned earlier, it does take up one slot. It's a must for Odin to be in the team in order to boost the leader skill right there's one slot taken secondly what did they introduce they introduced wine valkyries right works well right you minus one cd from Odin and the Norse gods but but one one cd all right <laughs> there's still cd9 and then uh what does wine valkyrie do is basically giving a attack boost um well we're not talking about the light and the fire one here all right so uh, one one turn of attack boost together with um, one column convert below the leader. Alright, so what 
um, is basically trying to straight away activate the, the two sword amelioration of the Norse god if you did ameliorate them. Alright, and then of course one turn of boost and then you, you feel that oh, Wine Belt is actually boosting Norse team a lot. Alright, but think about it. Alright, so it does do a, a, a turn of boost plus a column convert. Column convert. Who else uses column to play? Greek, right? Greek, it does convert one column below your leader, right? So if you're playing uh, Greek, by dissolving one, by converting one column below your leader, it's basically boosting Greek as well, right? Because Greek's amelioration is actually increased chance of dropping their uh, particular attribute. So basically, it's boosting Greek as well, right? Not only Greek, who else plays column? Babylon, right? So not only you're boosting, you're trying to boost Norse gods, you're actually further boosting other god teams out there in which it doesn't really make a difference now, right? <laughs> okay, so that's what, that's the, that's like uh, what I feel about uh, Mad Hate trying to um, so-called revive Norse gods. It's like, oh shit, this, this, this Norse god is kind of dying out kind of thing. And then they try to in introduce more cards to actually further boost Norse God back into the scene. Uh, yeah. Alright, and then last but not least is the one, one more slot restriction. is actually um, the, the recent release of VAR. Right, VAR is one of the, <laughs> I would say one of the attempts I don't know whether it is or not, but I, I, I see it as an attempt to revive Norse Gods as well because uh, VAR changes attribute when your leader and ally are the same and are gods. Right, and then the boost is basically uh, boosting god for one turn kind of thing. So, you know, I can see the whole Norse thing over there already. So, let's say that you actually fit in all of these cards into your Norse team. Alright, you have let's let's put it this way. Um, um let's let's play Dark Norse. Alright, my favorite. Okay. Loki. Odin. Two cards already. Um the Dark Wine Valkyrie. Um and Var. So you're left with one slot. Alright. What do you want to put for that one slot? Right, yeah, yeah, so you're being restricted so much that it's hard to play. There's there's not much versatility in in the team, uh, in the your team setup, right? So, as for you know Greeks, let's let's put it Greeks or Babylon. Uh, you you do have like you don't don't have as much slot restriction. That's why you can slot in like enchantress and other stuff to actually further boost your damage, right? So I feel that these are the few reasons why. What was keeping Norse God weak? Alright, so now we're gonna move on to the next part of the discussion whereby um, I do see suggestions by others because you see, we, we, we do see complaints from other players saying that uh, Norse Gods are weak and stuff like that and then they do give like suggestions on how to improve Norse Gods. Alright, and then these are the few suggestions I see online uh, be it like on the Facebook group or forum or even my guildmates alright and then I'll I'll read it out and then I'll explain along the way why these suggestions are not um, viable alright so first first of all you can see that um, a lot of people suggest that Norse God and Odin CD is too long right as of now is CD 10 yep true is long uh, as compared to like many other uh, series all right and then um, they suggest reducing the CD all right to like maybe 8 or something in which I think that is a no all right because um, the CD in the in the game now is pretty much very balanced and then they are at that CD for a reason all right because you can see that Norse gods they're doing a massive convert. Alright, CD 10 
and then by using Norse and Odin together, their link active skill actually converts um, a few colors to their, like let's say um, Loki, right? Loki and Odin, they convert um, what what do they convert? Let me see. Heart, heart, light, dark to enchant dark, alright, and then earth to enchant heart. Now that's a big convert, right? It's basically converting the entire the uh, entire screen or, or the entire board, alright, and then being CD10 for that kind of gigantic convert is pretty much reasonable, alright? They are they are at this um, CD because. Uh, it's pretty much gonna balance out the entire game, right? By reducing um, Norse God CD, you have to take in consideration of other converters out there, right? By reducing CD, will it affect um, the balance, right? Because you can see that we do have other converters, right? We do not have just Norse Gods and Odin existing in the game, right? We have Chinese Gods, um, as of now, you can see there are CD6, but they are convert. Uh, let's we're not talking about VR Chinese gods here, but the PR Chinese gods, right? Their CD6 convert is pretty much the more weaker version with no enchant and then here and there, right? In which I think that is reasonable. And then next up we have pretty much let's put it an example, right? Dragon Spiriter now have PR, right? So last time before PR, everybody. Let's talk about Cerberus and Agatha. Alright, last time everybody used uh, Cerberus, all max Cerberus because of the extra other than hard to hard to fire. They do a column of convert of fire runes when it's at all max, right? Which is so much more convenient compared to Agatha without the PR. Alright, so once PR Agatha came out, it is definitely more preferable than Cerberus right? because Agatha herself actually converts a row of fire runes already plus it's hard to enchant fire alright so there's a cycle or there's there's a balance so this one we'll just let Matt hit to do the balancing <laughs> okay so other than the CD we have uh, pretty much other suggestions whereby I think that it is not helping at all Alright, so other than the CD, uh, we have people suggesting that oh, we can just boost Norse God again by having VR Odin. Alright, VR Odin. So the problem of that is very obvious, right? So let's say we have we have a VR Odin. So what's next? Look above me. <laughs> You're gonna have like what? VR Saruman, VR Sirius, VR Diablo, VR Michael Lucifer. Can say goodbye to Nos once again, right? And then, obviously, if you have VR Odin, other cards will get VR as well. So, Nos will get that boost for a while, and then after that, it will just die out again, right? So, VR Odin, uh, definitely a no no, but maybe it will happen, but other cards will have it as well. So, it's not considered a boost. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so uh, last suggestion by other players is oh, since we have amelioration one to four now, why not having amelioration five to eight? All right, that's like <laughs> I don't know. Uh, amelioration four now costs five hundred souls. Right, if you want to burn like one thousand over souls for one amelioration stage, that's up to you. All right, so I cannot imagine. Madhead implementing amelioration 5 to 8 because number one I don't think it helps that much alright and then secondly it's gonna burn a big hole on us players because of the amount of souls needed to actually ameliorate 5 to 8. Right let's let's um let's say that our current amelioration 4 stage costs 500 souls. Just imagine what 5 to 8 costs. Alright? I don't want to do that please don't implement them. <laughs> okay, so this is just a suggestion by other players. So uh, to pretty much end off this discussion, I'm gonna give my own suggestions. All right. So uh, in this in this part, 
I would really want you guys to comment um uh, to to pretty much um agree or disagree on my suggestion. Right, I would like to hear from you guys as well and then as I said I'll try to reply to every single message uh, possible. Okay, so uh, what I feel is in order to boost Norse gods, what we can do is to modify what they already have instead of keep adding in additional contents to boost them up because eventually, um, I mean like other teams can actually use the additional contents like the cards, like Wine Valkyrie, these kind of things. Alright, so... Um, What's best for them now is to change what they already have. Right? Their their leader skill, their amelioration skill. I mean their leader skill, active skill, and then their amelioration. These are the pretty much the few stuff that we can tweak to kind of make them slightly stronger but not game breaking. Right? The the important part of um improving a series is to to actually balance out the gameplay and not make them too OP all of a sudden right so these are the few uh, suggestions that I have and then of course do leave a like if you uh, to agree uh, if you agree with me and then uh, of course comment if you um, disagree okay so what I feel is that um, you can actually change do a revamp a revamp for amelioration right because that's not that's not so hard to do right basically you just change the game files and we can have a brand new um active skill leader skill via amelioration right so you can see nowadays we have um, cards whereby they do change their active skill like um enchantment ex that kind of thing uh, by ameliorating to ameliorating two and then amel ameliorate four to change the leader skill. We have many many uh, cards out there now like uh, Chinese Paladins which have such amelioration stages alright whereby um, 2 and 4 actually changes their active and leader skill respectively right in which I think that um, it's actually quite a good idea to do that for Norse Gods right and then uh, those Norse Gods that are actually at all max now will actually get the boost immediately like after the update like if they actually implement this alright and then basically you can just put like a revamp for Norse Gods update kind of thing right it's, it's a very possible thing because uh, not, there's not much um, effort needed here because there's no extra battle there's no extra materials to hunt no extra uh, PR VR crap right it's just a, a, a re, re, revamp for Norse Gods right so uh, here, here's my suggestion. So, other than the stat boost, you can leave one to three for stat boost. That's not a, that's not a problem. So, amelioration two, I would suggest changing the active skill for Norse gods. Uh, other than let's 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 keep using Loki as an example. All right. So now Loki's active skill is dark runes. Uh, convert dark runes to enchant dark runes. That's all. Full stop. All right. Very simple active skill, but by tweaking the active skill a bit they still follow the classic Norse gods whereby they do have extra damage by dissolving um, enchanted runes alright so amelioration 2 can be something like this after amelioration I mean their, their active skill can be something like this after amelioration 2 right you can put something like example convert dark runes to enchant dark runes right for one round the more Enchant dark, uh, the more runes converted, the higher the attack, the higher the team attack to the max times two when this number of runes, like x number of runes, is converted. Example five, right? It's possible, right? It's not too game breaking, and then you do have a boost in the active skill, right? Does makes does does make a bit of sense in that way. Right, and then um, as I mentioned just now, ameliorate 4 is to change the leader skill. And then what I suggest is to make um, Norse team to not rely on Odin that much. 
right? So we do have that 0.5 extra boost for leader and ally without Odin in the team, right? So uh, I'm not sure how that will work out, but then it is possible because let's take a look at Gimsa and the red, green, blue Yancy, right? Um, red, green, blue Yancy amelioration four in a way. Um, does change the gameplay a bit whereby they do not have to be ally that they can be in a member and then Gimsa can still change attribute right, so it's a more um, something similar to that but um, I, I believe it will pretty much change Norse God playstyle a bit uh, if the amelioration 4 is like that like uh, they do not need to rely on Odin so it does open up more uh, team slots put other cards such as uh, more boosters and stuff like that so yeah that's all I can think of um, as of now so basically with that happening I can see I can foresee Norse God um, being slightly stronger uh, or pretty much on par with the more mainstream series out there and not being so so um, dumped in a way as of now all right so with this uh what do you guys think of my suggestions all right um do leave your comments down and then i'll just reply um as many as many um comments as possible all right and then before i end this video um we do have an update coming up soon which is nice seal and then many many um new cards all right a new main series god is coming out right something like babylon it's like babylon along the line of babylon gods right but it's a new playstyle so it's gonna be uh in the new meta game together with norse greek egyptian babylon and then we have this one new series coming out in the new update all right and then uh let's take let's read a bit of this um update right so in the new update many series including nons Western Beast, Norse, Journey to the West, Zodiacs, Investigers, and various fusion series without requiring any special conditions will gain new power and skills. Alright, so this is the one that I hope um, that is, that's coming true. What I suggest at the last part of the video will come true, whereby they will do a revamp without any special conditions and then getting new skills and power all right so pretty much this is all for my Norse gods discussion all right and then uh, whether you agree and this or disagree with me uh, of course leave it down in the comments below and then we will start a mini discussion <laughs> over there all right so with this uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this Norse god Norse god discussion all right it's been a while since I actually wanted to do this so now it's finally up and then uh, let the debate begins. Okay, so with this, gonna end this video here now. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.